on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy. The show that talks 100% LA Galaxy soccer. We're glad you could join us. Now it's time to sit back and relax as your hosts navigate through the twisting, turning, but never boring world of the five-time MLS Cup champion, LA Galaxy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I'm your host, Josh Guessman, coming to you on a Thursday, April 18th. The LA Galaxy getting ready to take on the San Jose Earthquakes coming up on Sunday, 5.15 p.m. game kicks off at 5.25. We're going to get you ready for that. We have some new MLS rules that will be in effect for that game, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Leagues, cups, promotional stuff, golden boot, all that fun stuff. And in just a matter of minutes, we're going to be joined by LA Galaxy head coach Craig Vanny. So a big show, a lot to talk about. In order to help me do all of that is the man himself. We're glad to have him back. It's Eric, the Portuguese hammer beer. Eric, how you doing, bud? I'm doing very well. Good. Camera is working. Yep. Microphone's working. Right. Internet's good. Right. Uh, do I need to knock on wood? We're uh, we're on top of the West. We're on top of the standings. Yeah. Think we're one on a win streak, presumably here. Life things are are going good right now. I like it. I'm feeling really good about how how things are, are shaping up. All right. All right. I'm gl- I'm glad you're happy. Okay. That's all. That's Should all. wrap it up. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. <laughs> uh, thanks for everybody night, for showing everybody. up. Yeah. There's nothing else to see here. No. No. It's good. Hey, it feels like everything is trending in the right direction here for the LA Galaxy. Right. We feel like there's positive momentum. If you go back and look at the earthquakes and the success that the Galaxy have had over the earthquakes in recent time, it's pretty successful. So everything's going. You have top. And bottom going against each other, the number one team in the Western Conference versus, or excuse me, number one team tied for the for the top in Major League Soccer with the LA Galaxy, the very bottom of the league, as in 29th place, yeah. San Jose, right? There's this huge... There's they, levels they, to this. There's <laughs> level, right? There is. There's, there's, and they're at the bottom of it, yeah. They, they are. Um, so... So you you sort of feel like everything's pretty positive, and again, um, just a total culture. It was there was a post on Reddit, and somebody said, "Hey, over in the UK, don't get to follow the Galaxy as much anymore." But like they turned it around, like what's been happening, you know? And people were like, "Man, culture change, you know, total shift, positivity reigns right now." And it's uh, it's an interesting little take to see this LA Galaxy team have the success. What did you think of the the Vancouver game? I, you know, I, nothing that you and, uh, you know, the El Nino didn't already cover, but what I saw, I saw the same things the first half, bit of a struggle to break down that low block. So, and it makes you think, okay, is this the same old galaxy that we've seen struggle? And I actually saw it a little bit differently in the second half instead of the galaxy, I think, turning it on. I think Vancouver made changes to press, but that actually benefited the galaxy. They were able to unlock and get their counterattack going. And so paint cell and peck causing problems along the right hand side there. Paint still making his case for team MVP, but Ricky's right there dropping dimes. I, I was pleased with that second half performance. You know, still some things that I think people are nervy about those set pieces. So that's still, uh, you know, still something that makes you feel a little bit uneasy and hopefully right. that can get under control. And I'm sure there'll be people in the chat wanting us to ask the head coach some questions about that as well. But I it, think two things can be true at the same time. Also, they can have their struggles, but they could also be playing very well. Same thing with Ricky Pouge. You know, we've been critical of him, you know, yeah. maybe disappearing for some games here and there, but he was absolutely dropping some dimes. And I want to shout out what the, what they said on the broadcast as well, because it kind of shifted my thinking I'm not crazy about him basically playing in that center back role when he drops back to recover. But if you're going to have someone to build the play up, don't you want your number 10 to be the guy with the ball at his feet? Wouldn't you rather have him than, you know, uh, it's nothing against my Yoshida, but you're going to prefer Ricky's vision and the passes that he's going to be able to ping. You'll want him building out of the back more than anyone else you want on the team. So that shifted my mind a little bit because, you know, you don't want to be caught in your opinion and say, hey, I don't, I'm not crazy about him going back. But at the same time, if you want someone who's going to build the game, 
why not Ricky? Have him be the guy who builds it from the back, and then he's going to be able to figure it out. And then my last takeaway from the game is just Jovalich. He just he just keeps scoring, and I just keep shrugging. He just keeps scoring. Uh, you know, nothing flashy, nothing fancy, but he just manages to always get on the score sheet, and I think Galaxy fans have a lot to be happy about that performance because that, that was as good as the second half as I think they've played all season, considering the first half maybe was <laughs> one of the ones that wasn't right there on the top of the list, but you know, probably the best half I've seen them put together with the way they were cooking. Yeah, yeah. The, the ability to turn it on and have that next gear. I mean, that's, that's I think you touched on it, whether uh, it was the LA Galaxy. I mean, listen, certainly going up the going up the wide area over and over again and then you know sort of forcing Vancouver to try to like not just sit back we've talked about it so many times scoring the first goal is so important and mm-hmm. it's a stupid stat because yeah. it's like it's like yeah you score first you're gonna do well you know you look at uh, a, a team like San Jose we're gonna talk about them. that's a team that has led in a lot of games and doesn't have any wins right like they have one win the entire season so there you can still do bad when you score first the bottom line is it gives you so many so many more options um, and what you want to do. And it allows the galaxy to play their style, which really is sort of a mix between, you know, sort of this, this build up passing style and then being direct whenever I have, I think the LA galaxy, if I saw the the chart correctly, are either number one or number two in directness in, in the whole league. Like whenever you talk about attacks, right. And it's like, that's crazy to think about because yeah, they have a lot of buildups, but it's about what happens whenever they get the ball in those positions and how direct they can be. Yeah. Um, and they have, and yeah, again, I think somebody, uh, and maybe it was after the 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 game against LAFC, but somebody was sort of you know critical and was saying, you know, why don't why don't the Galaxy just try to counterattack the whole thing? And it's like, I've been talking with Greg Vanny about that for the last like four years about transitions <laughs> and being more direct. And he'll be, you know, I don't want to put words in his mouth, especially being he's going to come on, but he'll talk about transitions and how they need to be quicker. They want to be yeah. out faster. And so, um, really, it's about getting the performance out of the guys that they have there. So. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I almost go back to that adage. Why not both? Because yeah. I'm, I'm someone who was saying in previous years with the personnel that they had, that they really probably should have been playing more of a counter attacking style of that transition play more than a possession. But I think what you see in this team is they actually have both pieces. They, they have the personnel that can possess that there were some wild first half stats, even though the score was zero, zero, the galaxy had like 80, 90% pos- possession at one point. So they have the skill to do that. And then when you turn the speed on with the paint and those wings, they'll kill you in transition too. And that was one thing I'll, I'll pat myself on the back for how, what we did last week as well. You know, there's a question in the super chat asking, you know, our team's going to be able to prepare for Joseph paint. the more tape there is on him. And I said that you can't, you can't train or, or, or protect against speed. Speed just you're either faster or you're not. And Paints will prove that when you have the speed that he has, there's no game planning for that. He's just going to be able. If you're able to get him in space, he's going to make things happen. So I think they have the possession and they have the transition play. So I think this this is very promising. Like I said, things are looking good. Feeling yeah. really good about the team. I then took your your thing that you said and I stole it and I used it on <laughs> on Vancouver Radio. So it's, and yeah, then we're on the same team. It's how it works. Yeah. And, and then was proven correct, by the way. So I would like to point out that that was also you know one of those things that that worked out in our general favor. Well, before we get too far in, we want to uh, welcome our very special guests. We've had him on before. We're glad to have him on again. His team currently first in the Western Conference, tied for first in the Supporter Shield. Uh, a big corner of the galaxy. Welcome to Mr. Greg Vanny. Greg, are you there? Hey Josh, I'm here. Thanks for having me. Awesome, Greg. We got uh, we got Eric here as well. We're we're glad to have you. Um, Eric, it's How's it's it it's one of those uh, one of those things when we look at the start of this season, and I think you've talked about it a bunch, but I sort of want to bring it back to um, you know what you were saying about it is that you looked at the first ten games in this season, and uh, it looked like quite an uphill battle, especially coming off a 2023 season where uh, mm-hmm. with injuries and everything else, the team really struggled. Sort of how now you're eight games through that. You have a couple more to get through those first 10 games. How do you sort of judge the reaction that the LA Galaxy, that your team is sort of, you know, given to you? And and how does it how does it really feel? Does it feel like a huge change from 2023? Is it more than just the injuries? Yeah, I mean, as far as the just coming into 2024 and the response of the group, you know, some of the challenges, tough schedule good teams that we were playing at home, starting with Miami opening day, some of the, you know, a lot of road games. I think we, we've had what five of eight plus, I think, uh, I think eight or nine of our first 13 are on the road. So it's a, it's a uphill battle on that side. Plus we were bringing back Gaston and trying to get him healthy and get Martin up to, to Martin up to speed and everybody else and get guys integrated. So 
I'm really pleased with the res- the response. I mean, you saw us in preseason. We didn't get a ton of results in preseason. We we're still trying to put the pieces together up until the last day, and uh, and the guys have just really come together and and bonded and stuck to again the program and what we're trying to do. The pieces that we were able to bring in that everybody you know worked to bring in is it have really helped to accelerate the things that we want to do with this team. And so uh, while I think we're still growing and we're still learning in each of these processes and we're still trying to really get to the best version of what we can be, we've seen some really solid performances. We've seen some gritty performances. Uh, and there's still things that we have to work on. You know, that's that's what you get in the first eight games. You also get some awareness and some things you got to improve upon. And uh, I like our potential. I like our upside. And we're going to keep growing as a team. And that's what we're we're continuing to focus on and try to take the results along the way. Yeah. It, it, to follow up on that, you said, you know, the upside in the ceiling. And, and I think from the outside observation is that this L.A. Galaxy team seems like they're a good team. Um, you have a ton of talented players, obviously, with Joseph and, and Ricky and, and Gabrielle Peck. And, and, you know, you can go through the middle of that field and, and pick sure. out quite a, quite a bit of names. But where where do you think that ceiling is and, and what does it look like when the L.A. Galaxy are playing to that ceiling? I think we can be really different uh, as it relates to teams in the league. And the reason I say it and, and what I share with our guys is what I think we're capable of is moving the ball really fast. And when, when we get the ball off our foot and the ball is moving and it's not sticking on people's feet and we're in good spots for each other. Uh, and then we utilize, um, we utilize our pace. We utilize our wings. Uh, we get Ricky Gaston, those guys, the right touches, but the ball doesn't stick and it keeps moving. I watch us in training and I've said this to the guys, our goal is how fast we can play. I don't really believe that there's anybody in the league that can play as fast as us, uh, both on a technical level and the speed at which we can play both once we, we, we destabilize and we really go, we've got a lot of capacity to, to just play at a high level and high speed. That's where I think our upside is. And we're still trying to work through some of those relationships. We're still trying to work through a little bit of the positioning uh, of the best way to set up our positioning. Sometimes it's for the attack, but a lot of times it's actually for the transition defending that we need to continue to improve upon. Um, so there, there's things that we're still we're still kind of growing at, but our I think our ceiling is that we can look really different than a lot of teams in our league by having the ball and playing at a really top speed. And and that's where what we're trying to push this group towards. Uh, that realization and, and that execution on a consistent basis. And all of these games look a little bit different. You know, some teams are going to sit on us and they're going to make it hard for us uh, to, to sometimes play that way as spaces get taller and, uh, or get tighter and, and get smaller and they're going to make it difficult. Other teams might press us and try to just take disrupt us right off the bat. We've also got to learn how to win all of these types of games. And when they show up and the team gives us something different to think about, we've got to also have solutions for all of those. And that's, that's our adaptability that I also want us to continue to grow throughout the course of the season, which we've seen a few different things in the early part of the season, some that have given us more trouble than others. But um, but these great teams know how to win different types of games. And this league is probably the, the most difficult league and giving you different types of games and different different types of fields, stadiums, altitude, whatever. You're going to get so many different types of games through the course of a, of a season. So speaking of that speed on the wing, over the last few games, we've seen Peck and Paintsill kind of overload on the right-hand side. Is that something that you've always had in your back pocket that maybe you've been wanting to unlock over the past few seasons? Or is it something, like you said, that you see these players in training and it's the style of those players in particular, Peck and Paintsill, that dictated that shift in tactics or style? It's uh, a little bit of the all of the above. Like I, I've used <laughs> at times something that looks like uh, two forwards. Um, you know, we haven't necessarily had the the pace of those two guys and and the directness and the capacity. I think to play uh, on the run like those two guys bring uh, and with the quality that they bring. So that's a little bit of uniqueness. Um, so it's something we like. I think it is really difficult to defend. There are certain scenarios that I like it better than others. You know, depending on what the opposition is doing. Uh, and so it's not something we'll see all the time, but it's definitely something that we'll bring out when, when we think the opportunity, it can give us something, uh, something different and something that I think the opportunity, the, the opposition will have a hard time with, for example. So uh, it, it's just 
I've been kind of known to try some things tactically over the years. This is one of them that I, I think has proven that we can really overload a side when we want to. But if we do it all the time, then everybody's going to expect it and they're going to start to defend for it. So we want to do, we try to show some different things so that we're not so easy to to game plan against also, but our guys feel comfortable in, in being able to do one or two or three different things over the course of the season. Greg, you've uh, you've mentioned set pieces. I thought we'd talk about it a little bit. Obviously, <laughs> Uh, a sort it, it's one of those things that I'm sure if you could snap your fingers and fix, you would just that way you wouldn't have to hear us talking about it after every game or, or, yeah, or doing exactly. things. I, I think it would make you feel better. But I mean, is it is it a matter of a team, you know, outside of maybe Maya and even in Martin? Martin's a big guy. He scares me. Um, but I, <laughs> is, is it about being like a little bit of a smaller team in some ways and, and having troubles with height there? I know you're going sort of with a zone and, and a man marking spaces yeah. in there. I mean what's everybody's asking the question what the solution is i just i just explain it to us a little bit yeah i i think look we we don't have many guys who i would say are dominating in the air you know maya is definitely probably our most dominating figure and then you have guys who i would put in the solid category martin is a warrior and he battles he loves to mark he doesn't want to necessarily be zoning and tacking he feels like he can lock somebody down in the situation and win and win those so i think for us given our group and and the personalities we have again depending on who's on the field it's it's finding the right balance between uh who we have in a zone who needs to be marking you know we give up we give up the goal this week to brian white julian is actually the initial marking brian white just kind of tosses him off and the next thing you know diego is the one that's trying to contest with Brian White, that's not a good con- good matchup. Julian's laying on the ground. He needs to either fight through the right through that 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 battle with Brian White and not get tossed aside or else we got to get a foul called, but I I don't want them to be playing for the foul. I want you to fight through it. Don't let this guy get rid of you. Make sure you're in his chest and and you're competing with him and don't give him a free header. Uh so again, I think our marking has got to get a little bit a little bit better, a little stronger. We're going to look at some more options, um, and we keep training each week, something a little bit different. I think you saw this week we put we put Gabriel and, and Josuke a little higher to, to see if we could draw some numbers out of the box to maybe give our guys a little bit more space to attack the ball because I feel like Maya was getting boxed in a little bit and wasn't able to attack. Um, so we tried a little bit of that, and we'll try some others. We might shift our marking around a little bit, but we're, we'll, we're going to keep looking at solutions, and – this week we just isolated some guys into some marking situations just to work on on marking and wrestling to get our spots. So uh, it, there are there's certainly a solution. We're going right. to keep working towards it. And you know if that's the solution we need to figure, I don't. Uh, I I think I'm confident that we can find the solution to be a steady team defensively on set pieces. You know I think we've given up three goals in the run of play all season. I'd be more concerned if we were leaking goals in many other ways. I think we've got to solidify this defending and set pieces. So far, it's not been acceptable, but we've got to, we can find a solution to this. This is, this is something that we individually and can solve. We can solve this. So. So speaking of that, you mentioned some opportunities that maybe the players have for growth. And it's always fun from a fan perspective to play football manager from your couch or from the keyboard saying X player should start sure. or Y player should be subbed here. But could you talk about maybe the importance of managing personalities or any of those other factors that might come into play outside of just, you know, the regular uh, squad selection when it comes to managing a team? Huh. Yeah, there, there's a there's a ton of Loaded uh, question, variables. Right? Yeah, I mean, it's just <laughs> there's there's a difficult, it's a difficult question because there's just so many variables that come into play on any given week or uh, whether, you know, whether they're personnel decisions inside of a game because you like matchups or you want different guys or, uh, you know, it could be something that has to do with the training week or you could be like with Gaston for a little while. We're just trying to bring him along with minutes. Uh, so we could, I, I want to try now, right now, I'm also in the process of trying to build up fitness for guys but also keep guys connected and keep guys involved because there is going to be a point in the season in the next few weeks where we start to play three games in a week and you can't just rely on one group of players you need guys who have multiple guys who have high level of match fitness and who are sharp and you're also trying to build relationships with new guys who are joining the team so there's just so many there's so many variables that you 
at times you don't want to try to overthink it and you want to try to get, build some consistency, but you're also trying to manage 20 or so guys and you're trying to keep as many guys both uh, in a good place mentally and ready to step on the field and help at any time because we know we're going to get into a denser part of the schedule where everybody's going to have to play an important role for us to be successful through those those dense periods in the schedule. So to that point, yeah, well, in one of the cinematic match recaps, uh, you know, you're seen pointing to the top of the table at the end of the video, and we find ourselves again coming in at the top of the West, coming into this match. How important is it for the, you to have that messaging to the team to stay on top of the table? Or is there a fine line, like you said, knowing that this is still an early part of the season uh, for you? So what, how do you manage that motivation without maybe putting too much pressure this early on in the season? Yeah, I mean the thing, the thing we talk about more than anything is about our performances, and and you know there's games when we win, and I'll come in and we'll do a fair amount of stuff just on things that we need to improve upon. So it's about never trying to be too high, keep pushing the confidence, but we need to we need to be very clear as we again get into the latter stages, not even the latter stages, but even as we get into May and June, and the and again the density of the schedule comes up, and you have less time on the training field. We need to be as clear as possible about who we are and how we're going to be successful, what each of our roles is going to be, developing those relationships so that we can get to a point where we're just kind of getting from game to game and recovering more than training. And those things can continue to show from uh, through those through those moments. And right now, that's we're staying really on our uh, like looking at our performances making sure we're, we're trying to improve upon the things that we didn't do at the level we want. Look at the things we did really well. Let's keep reinforcing these things. We try to stay focused on that. And if, and as I say to the guys, if your performance, if we perform at a high level, the way we should and way we're capable of, and we can do that for the consistent part of the game, the result will be there for us to take at the end of the game. If, if we're having a hard time with our performance, then it's going to reflect potentially in the result. We need to just stay, stay in the moment and perform uh, and really try to, again, stay process oriented, not just results. The results is a product of the process that you're doing, right? Yep. Absolutely. Greg, uh, one, one more, let's say two more questions. We'll let you get out of here. Just, well, I'll uh, lump them both in right now for you. Uh, one is update on, uh, on Garces and when he could possibly, uh, be arriving here, uh, in, in the States. And then if you could talk okay. a little bit about the San Jose game as well, obviously a, a big one, you've already played them, but what are you seeing for this weekend? First, Garces, uh, op optimistic he could arrive early next week. Uh, so I think a, you know visa appointment and stuff has been scheduled, and then it's just getting him traveling as soon as uh, as soon as that gets taken care of. So hopefully it can be early next week, and we can start integrating him into training and and really getting to integrate him into the group and getting to know even more about him as we work. I mean, we've got obviously seen a lot. I think he's going to bring some really interesting qualities specifically on the defending side. He's a guy who really likes to get tight and get into people's face. And he's a very, very good open field one-on-one -on -one defender and just doesn't like to give guys any real space to breathe. And uh, I think that'll be nice. Very great athlete, which gets out in the open, which makes him part helps him on that open defending. I hope he comes in and he's just a beast in the air. Uh, we'll still see uh, with that. I know he's good in the air, but we could use him to be a beast in the air. Um, so there, there's things that we really like that he adds to our group. He's still on the younger side, so we want to make sure that we integrate him and help him to really settle into our team and settle into our league. But we're really excited about what he what he can bring to us. Um, as far as San Jose, um, they, you know, I watched the game last week. Obviously, we played them earlier in the season. Uh, they're they're a hardworking team. They, you know, they never really, they never really sit in too terribly much. They're always trying to step out and get pressure to the ball, which can can make the game fast and uh, sometimes keep the game kind of always on its heels and or sorry, always on its toes. And we've got to be able to be in the right positions, play quick. Uh, they've obviously had a little bit of a tough time getting results, but even when I watched them against Colorado, they had some chances to go ahead in that game and they had good parts of the game where they look like they could do something and then they get on the wrong side of the scoreline. So again, for us is we've got to keep doing the things that we're doing. We've got to be in the right spots. The ball's got to be moving quickly. When they start to step out and try to get pressure, we've got to utilize the spaces that they're vacating when they're stepping out and we've got to get through and get behind as we did in the first game. Uh, we had some beautiful goals against them in the first game. If those types of things open up, 
I'd like to see us be able to take advantage of them again. Uh, and we got to defend set pieces, you know, and defend as a, as a group um, because there will be a team that is, they're certainly coming in with a little bit of desperation to get results and to, to really compete. And we've got to make sure that this is not a, a, a number one in the table against the bottom of the table in our league. Every game is difficult and every opponent is, uh, is difficult to beat. And, and we've just got to make sure that we are, we're executing on all the little things. Awesome, Greg. Well, I appreciate it. We had uh, one super chat question that came in from one of our listeners. It's a okay. one word one. So it'll be, it'll be quick for you. Um, <laughs> Gary asks, uh, and this is a soft drink based question. G- Gary asks, Greg, is it Coke or Pepsi? That's Coke for sure. Yeah, they, that's always the right answer. The right, right answer. That's my yeah. coach. Right okay. There. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, good, Coke good. for sure. Very, very good, Greg. Thanks so much for stopping by. <laughs> we wish it. you luck uh, over right, the weekend. Thanks, and I'm guys. sure we'll be talking to you. There he goes. Appreciate your time, Greg. Thanks. thanks. Yeah, All right. Thanks. There he goes, Mr. Greg Vanny, LA Galaxy head coach, uh, in there. And see, Gary, I got your, uh, I got your question in there at the end. There, I was trying. <laughs> we, we have a hard. We need out. a fun one, right? Yeah. We need yeah. To end we, with the fun. One. I wanted to make sure that we got Greg out whenever we said we would. So, and we did. We accomplished that goal, and so everybody will, uh, will remain happy and uh, and greg can go on with the rest of his evening so um no it's uh listen if you listen to greg he's a very consistent speaker i usually don't catch him you know saying one thing and then changing his <laughs> mind and saying another thing it's it's a lot of the same things garces good news on that with the yeah. with the early next week there's even we should just jump right to that as well because we do have news on that um and uh there was a report from uh from pipe sierra coming out um earlier this week that basically said the la galaxy decided to immediately buy carlos amiro garces right the 22 year old no longer do it on a loan with an option um, so that means that they are going to be sold. He's going to be sold for one point four million dollars, uh, and the club uh, keeps thirty percent of the future sales. Right. So all of that. That defender signed a five-year contract apparently, and will travel in the next few days. Is what Pipe reported. I can say that in general, uh, all that is correct. Um, and the LA Galaxy have uh, uh, apparently uh, bought uh, Garcis there. So so it was like it's, sort of rent rent to own, and now <laughs> now it's they bought. They were it's like. One of those- oh, good. It feels like they, the way Greg was speaking about him as well, that they really liked what they saw. So maybe the initial conversations sound like they went in for a loan and then more, the more research they did on, they said, let's lock this down at this price. Let's make sure <laughs> we, we get this deal and lock it in at this price. I think that's probably what they were looking at is they were probably imagining that they're high on him, that he's going to play so well that maybe he'd be more expensive to buy out at the end of the season. Could be. So so that could be, hey, let's lock this in now and then give you the percentage and then we'll worry about it later. So I think that's a good sign if I'm looking at this from the outside perspective is whatever they saw, they saw something that they liked. They took the car for a test drive and said, no, no, I'll buy it. I'll buy it right now. <laughs> yeah. We don't need, yeah, we don't need to talk about financing or any of that. Like, let's get me off the lot with yeah. this thing. So I think it's, it's a promising sign that they were looking to move this quickly on uh, this type of player. And the way he was talking about it, n- I'm not going to say he's going to fix all our set piece problems, but the way he was describing Garces, it sounds like someone who, you know, is going to be tough in the box, is going to have the physicality, going to have the, the athleticism and the speed as well. So he's someone I'm really excited to see to get into the fold here, especially with, you know, the thought of Neil possibly coming back yes. with Yoshida still being the mentor and the captain and holding all things together. So now you're going to be able to float people around, keep Martin healthy because we know that the, those injury concerns are there. So to me, this is, this is a really exciting move. Yeah, it, it feels that way. Um, certainly it, it's, it's also interesting. And just from a, let's look back a little bit here and then we'll have to get to some super chats as they're, uh, they're mounting up a little bit. Um, you and I talked to Greg from when he was in a hotel, whenever yeah, he had his first, first come his first week. Yeah. 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 And it just, it's just interesting one as time goes by and all that stuff. Right. Um, I think I remember, I, I told you this, but, uh, do you know, do you know when Greg Vanny's introductory press conference was? Uh, I do January 6th. January 6th. Yeah. Yes. I remember where I was. Yes. I was watching, (laughs) I was talking to Greg Vanny and I was watching on the, the, I was watching what was happening at the Capitol. Just weird times. Just the whole thing is, uh, is really interesting. So, um, no, that's where it is, but no, uh, Greg is great. And like I said, we've had him on the podcast before. It was about time, you know, almost a third of the way through the season. It was time to get him on and let's sort of hear him. And we had him on at Coachella as well. So Greg is, uh, is a rather permanent staple here on corner of the galaxy and has been for a little while, but I'm glad that we could bring him to you and he could tell talk to you guys. And hopefully we got some of the answers questions yeah. answered. I mean, I didn't get all of the ones, but the people <laughs> were screaming at me in the chat room about, but I, yeah. I got most of them. Right. And, and I, I do like listening to him speak. And I think people 
you know, <laughs> you're, the questions are never going to be good enough from from the tweets and no. from the the super chat, and no. they're always going to want harder questions or, yes. or this and that. But I think if you listen to the way Greg is speaking, he was he was. I'm not going to say he was critical of the team, but he he spoke about opportunities like where they need to get better. He he told you everything that you needed to know. And I, I part of that loaded question that I asked him is I kind of knew what the answer was going to be, but I think it's important to hear it directly from the head coach's mouth. Like there's a lot of different things that he has plates spinning and things happening that it's not as simple as, you know, when, when you're on a football manager, you just put this player in here and then take this player out and then boom, problems fixed. There's a lot of different dynamics. And I think it's important when you hear him talk about the team and you hear him talk about all the different things that go into it, you, you feel like the galaxy are in good hands with him at the helm. And, and with, and I'll say this with, with however critical I may be, you know, from time to time, that's kind of our job as well as when the team's not looking good or right. when things go a different way, you have to ask questions and that's the purpose of it as well. But I think what I'm happy to see is this season, uh, the vision that, you know, Greg's been talking about these past few seasons. It feels like, the team on the field isn't necessarily matching with what he's saying. Right. This year, it feels like the team on the field and his words, it seems like it's all coming together. And that's not to say, I, I think that's a credit to Greg Vanny is that he had this with him all along. It's just a matter of the play on the field needed to catch up with what he wanted the team to do. So I think I'm really happy with how he's doing this season. And when you hear him speak, I feel like the team is in really good hands moving forward. Yeah, it is uh, is an interesting one. Uh, just overall, just uh, again, the, uh, what I've always found is that if you, if you ask the question um, respectfully that you usually get a really good answer. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I'm always up for like, you can, it doesn't matter if you you want to talk to us, Greg and I have had set piece conversations almost after every game. Right. So it's like, it's one of those things that you can ask them about. We're going to talk about it, that type of thing. So, uh, Patrick, by the way, a $10 super chat coach V F O T W. Should it be F T W? What am I missing with the O? Cause F T W for the win. Do you know what? Yeah, F- I know for the win. I don't I know, know the O. F-O-T- do, maybe I, it's a typo. Is, is or it, maybe Patrick will correct Or us. maybe Patrick will tell us what, like, <laughs> I'm just old and we don't know, but thank you for the uh, $10 super chat. Uh, Angel $10 super chat in there. Uh, Angel says, what up, skis? Uh, okay. lo- love the pod. Thanks, guys. Shout out to my homie, Adrian and Kevin. Let's get this W this weekend. There you go. There's from Angel. Shout out uh, Adrian and Kevin. Let's there get you go. this W. I like it. I like him. I'm, I'm, I positive like, vibes. Uh, positive vibes. That's what I was just going to say. Kyle, uh, $10 super chat. Uh, Josh, congrats on getting coach on the show. Thank you, Kyle. We appreciate that. Uh, it's always good to have uh, the LA Galaxy uh, participate in the show. It's not. It's you a know, good get. You, you don't need to. You don't need to hear us talking the whole time. <laughs> you know, it doesn't. You heard what you need to hear. Yeah, that's right. So uh, anyway, that's where we sit uh, with all of that. Now, uh, one of the things I want to get to is the standings. We talked about the standings with the LA Galaxy currently in the top of the Western Conference, and then you go all the way down the bottom. Just, 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 for another thirteen spaces underneath the LA Galaxy <laughs> is San Jose. Uh, they have three points with one win so far and uh seven losses that's that's tough there's not even a draws rough. in there yeah. yeah and a minus 10 goal differential which keeps them 15 from the la galaxy if you want to do that you know little absolute zero math for you yeah it's okay i'm, I'm here. i don't like it i can hang in there yeah i know right it's it's setting up it's it's mm-hmm. be it's going to be weird uh whenever we look at the overall supporter shield standings yes you may look at it this way eric if you'd like to and it shows the la galaxy just underneath miami or shall we do it sort it by points per game let's sort it by points per game it makes me feel better <laughs> makes you feel better the la galaxy tops in Major League Soccer right now on points per game tied with New York Red Bulls. Interesting, those two teams played preseason and there was no indication whatsoever that either of those teams yeah, was going to be, were, yeah. you know, sort of top teams in the in the conference and everything that's going on. So, um, yeah, it's just uh, just one of those. What, I mean, I think it's deserved. I can't. You can't say it's not deserved. And you and I were talking about it and the Vancouver radio guys, Asa and Colin, they listened to the show and they were like, so what do you mean whenever you say, you know, Vancouver's had four home games and five out of there? You know, I'm like, I'm like, you should play better at home. Your stats are juiced because you you have the home games. And it's like the LA Galaxy, on the other hand, are doing something that and we've seen this whenever teams have not been able to play in their stadiums and they go out and they jump out to this like really nice road record and you're like oh man they're winning games right like imagine having to play like your first 10 home 10, 10 games on the yeah. road because your home your home isn't ready or you can't play there or it's snowing or there's a whole bunch of other reasons right think, yeah Nashville had a situation like that when they were building the stadium and yeah it happens from time to time i think Miami even had a little bit of that their first season so it, it's interesting that's funny when you go back to the points per game cuz they're still not clear of other teams, and that's what makes you a little bit frustrated. It's like they can't jump Miami because of the points. They can't jump New York, or they're they, even though they're technically above the standings, uh, you know, they're, they're still the same points per game. But the one promising thing is we've seen some referee decisions, some some questionable calls here or there. They could be clear 
favorites, the supporter shield, top of the West, top of the supporter shield. If it's just a call, a whistle goes differently here, a card stays in the pocket there and they could be sitting, you know, on 16, 17, maybe even 18 points there. So it's, it's one of those things right. where in a, in a, we're happy with how they're doing, but there, there's a twist of fate where they could be doing even better than they are right now. So I'm, I'm looking for it. I'm, I'm getting behind the galaxy that we're, we're going to go clear. We're going to go clear of these teams. None of this tied on points per game or tied on points. I think they need to show, get to that level, especially when you need to handle business against the bottom of the table with a minus 10 goal differential. The Western Conference, and I will say it, and other people have said it, so I won't be the first people to say it, the Western Conference is soft right now. Yeah. Um, I expect that there's going to be some changes. I expect that there is going to be some rising cream as it, as it goes, um, trying to get all that sort of mixed together. Who are those teams? I don't know. I think certainly you have to look at <laughs> LAFC as one that, that is, a, is sort of a sleeping giant, what they're going to be able to do in the summer. And I don't know that that's going to fix all their problems because it hasn't so far. But the numbers like them, right, what they're doing. Mm-hmm. So I expect them to come up. I don't know if Colorado is real. Yet, I'm still trying to figure that out. I watched the game against San Jose, and Greg Vanny watched the game against San Jose. I think we have similar sort of takes on it, which is San Jose could have had goals in that game, and they didn't. Um, so you look at that. Uh, a team like Sporting Kansas City, I always expect to be better than where they are if they're not the top four teams in the Western Conference. Yep. So that Vancouver's a huge question mark, too. What happens when they go on the road now that they have yep. all these stacked up? Are they going to be able to find you know, the wins in that? I mean, is there anybody in the Western Conference that you're sort of like, man, sleeping giants, they're coming? The, the one that I see that jumps out of me is Portland. Portland seems like they have pieces and with, they're going to bring in a new designated player or striker as well. I think they're one that I have... Sitting at tenth, that doesn't feel like that's where gonna that's where they're gonna land. They've historically, over the last few seasons, you know, kind of struggled and and maybe made late pushes towards the end of the season. But I think with a new coach, some new designated players, I think it's gonna take a while for them to start gelling and figuring it out. But I think they have the talent on their roster to make a push and be kind of dangerous towards the end of the season, almost like last season's Houston, where Houston made that push towards the end and no one wanted to play Houston. I think Portland could very much be that team later on in the season. So they're the one that I'm keeping my, my side eye on and I'm curious to see how they're going to look uh, matched up against the galaxy. Good, good, good. All right. Uh, by the way, Patrick, uh, and, and, and now it, do you sometimes feel like the chat room is having more fun than we're having? Oh, hundred percent. I just, just want to jump in the chat room. It's the yes. best. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> uh, fan of two wingers, F O T W, right? That, okay. That's a good one. I like that one. That was from field of berm. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's a, uh, it's a good one. So yeah, where there's lots of new slang being tossed in the chat room, which is and always fun. There's uh, more soda, uh, super chats. There yeah, is. It's Chris here. If you want me to chat it yeah, out, yeah, go for it. It says, it says real G's. Drink Cactus Cooler, so let's go COG Pod. So Cactus Cooler, I'm a fan. Where do you stand on Cactus Cooler? When was the last time I had a Cactus Cooler? That's a gr- that's that really is, I think, the question. That's a fair. That is a right? good question. I don't know. I can't put my. I I liked it. I didn't have a problem with it. Right. I'm just yeah. saying. I just don't know when the last. Do they still make cac- Cactus Coolers still that's, around? That's a fair question because I remember definitely drinking it a lot in high school. It seems like but a high then school as drink. you be, as you become older, like. You're not like, I'm not going to the store to buy cactus cooler. Well, and again, you don't want you like know. a blue mouth like or green mouth. <laughs> or, it's know, orange. It's orange. orange. Orange mouth. Wait a minute. Whatever. You're telling on yourself. There's a here. bunch of, there's a bunch of, <laughs> listen, I just think there's a bunch of different flavors out there. That's what I'm saying. Fair enough. So, um, but no, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question. Executive producer Herb chimes in uh, $29 super chat. I don't know why either, Herb, but I like it. I'm not going to complain. <laughs> Comes on, uh, come on, viewers, listeners. Over 100 people tuned in. Please hit the like button. Josh and the crew volunteer their time and put in a lot of work to make the podcast happen. I Sometimes I think I'm executive producer, Herb. Yeah, I, I've got it. I, I, after having some conversations with executive producer, Herb, he's a fan of the classics. Okay. I think 29 is for... Eduardo El Tanque Hurtado. That's number twenty nine was his number. That's a good that's, pull. Um, he's gonna he's gonna chime in. He usually explains right. what the numbers were. That's my guess as to why he's putting twenty. It's better than anything I had. I just thought maybe he <laughs> was a little short this year, this week, and you know thirty was the best way to go. <laughs> yeah, it was tax pre. That's post tax money there. <laughs> uh, it's Chris says, uh, Josh. Let's meet up at the game on Sunday, and I'll give you a twelve pack of cactus cooler. I mean, I could have <laughs> cactus done done. cooler and pupusas on the same day. Doesn't get much better than that. All right. 
so anyway, as the AOL chat room We're runs sideways. rampant over here, it's, <laughs> We're all the way sideways. They're using acronyms that I I can't I haven't seen in a while either. So uh, anyway, so that's sort of where uh, where we stand with standings. Uh, we look at schedule coming up, and obviously we talk about the game in San Jose, the only home game in April, and then away to Austin. Greg Vanny talked about it when he was on the show just a couple minutes ago. If you missed it, you tuned in late. Uh, but the LA Galaxy uh, do eventually start getting these multiple games per week, right? Playing three games in a week, doing that type of thing. So uh, you have uh, Seattle away to Seattle on uh, May 5th. You have um, home to Salt Lake, which Salt Lake has been playing good. Chicho Rondo is playing great. So there's there's a lot of stuff in there. That's going to be a really fun game. Uh, you have Minnesota. Uh, so the Galaxy go to away to Minnesota on 515, 518, away to Charlotte. Charlotte, a much better team right now. Um, on the Eastern on the Eastern Conference. They're playing better. They're looking better. I expect that they're actually going to climb up that Eastern Conference, so we'll keep an eye on them. Uh, and then it's L.A. Uh, hosting Houston and L.A. Ho- hosting Dallas. So a little Texas swing at uh, at, uh, at the end of May for, for the L.A. Galaxy, hosting both Houston and Dallas to close things out. So the schedule is coming. It's going to start hitting rapidly, especially as we get ready for League's Cup and League's Cup and the break and all the things. But the crazy thing about League's Cup this year is it's, it's skewed a little bit towards the end of of the summer more than it is in like the middle of the summer. And because of that, there's a whole bunch of games and then like a 10 game stretch that basically closes out the season. So leagues couple hit, and then it's going to be a 10 game stretch to, to come in. I don't know if that's the exact math, but it's close. Yeah. Um, it's in that neighborhood. Yep. Yeah. And it's, it's, it also makes you think is how well the galaxy are performing right now. It makes you think, can they make noise in the league's cup? And then do you want them to make noise in the league's cup? So it's, you don't want them we saw what happened last year. When you get knocked out early, then you have such a long lull, it's hard to get, to get the wheels going again. So you do want them to progress past, past that group of three. But at the same time, you know, do you want them adding those extra miles and possibility for injury with how well they're playing and where things can happen? It, it's, it's an interesting thing. One conversation that I go back to, I remember having, is with the CONCACAF Champions Cup spot available now with League's Cup, and the open cup not being an opportunity for the galaxy to get a spot in that uh, competition as well. That could be one of those alternate pathways. We talk about it all the time. You know, if you're not going to win the supporter shield, if you're not going to win MLS cup leagues cup is going to be one of those pathways that the team can earn one of those CONCACAF champions cup spots. And to see the galaxy back in that competition, right. all this talk about are the galaxy back or the galaxy, you know, close to back or how are we doing? I think once you see them in that CONCACAF competition, that's a sign planting your flag the galaxy are back so i think we'll we'll talk about that obviously as it gets closer but i think if you put your eggs into that league's cup basket that could be something that's very promising for the next few seasons to come and basically league's cup right now 100 days out or it was just a couple days ago was it yesterday that they tweeted it out it was probably yesterday I was 100 like, days away yeah, yesterday 100 days away yesterday so uh, that means today is uh, 99, 99 days. that's there right go. I'm, I'm here thank Not you just a hat rack folks that's right um i wanted to get to this the they did release the 2024 league's cup venues uh Audi Field in Washington, D.C., BMO in Los Angeles, uh, Dick's Sporting Good Parks in Colorado, Dingley Health Sports Park in Carson, Geodis Park in Nashville, PayPal Park in San Jose, Q2 in Austin, Red Bull Arena in New Jersey, Shell Energy Stadium in Houston, Snapdragon Stadium in San Diego, Subaru Park in Chester, PA, PayPal Park in San Jose, Toyota Stadium in Frisco, Texas, and TQL Stadium in Cincinnati. Now, I don't know if I really want to explain this to you. Um, <laughs> I remember bringing it up when we were breaking down the Leeds Cup. And I'm like, I, yeah, don't, go for it. I don't want to do it. <laughs> uh, so basically, uh, Liga MX clubs with hub privileges will play in venues from the pool below in their hub state when ranked higher than their opponent to the duration of their hub privilege. So basically, they're going to have a hub state, which like, I guess your hub state is like California. So well, you're going to know, s- I know Texas isn't a hub state anymore, but that's, that could be a different conversation. <laughs> right. So there's a hub state. So if you're in California, then you would play in California as long as you outrank your opponent for the entire. So if you had, a, if you were a very high ranking league of M- MX team and they all get seated, right? Um, if you were high ranking in that, you would stay in that state. So you wouldn't be flying all over the place. The idea is to eliminate some travel for some of the, yeah. some of the Mexican and- teams. And to favor those Mexican teams who last year were put in some difficult situations with Leon being stuck in an airport and all those different things. So I think they're trying to say, and I think that's something that Liga MX fans were upset about is why did the American teams get all the privileges? You know, none of the games are happening. So I think they're trying to kind of move 
the balance in, in the other direction to make it a little more equitable for those teams. Uh, let's see. All other Liga MX teams will play at the stadium of their MLS opponent. Any knockout round matches between two Liga MX clubs will be played at a regional venue. Also from the pool below, regional venues for the group stage have been previously announced. So that's where you sit. Uh, the League's Cup begins on July 26th when there are opening matches there uh, and basically goes all the way through the end of August there. I think August 31st, if I remember off the top of my head, I was trying to see if they were late. Gonna... Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's like you said, it's like then you get into September and it's September soccer and it's September, October and you're done. That's it. And, and then it's MLS Cup before yeah. Thanksgiving. Right. And yeah. we're, we're and we're done. Yeah. And yeah. no, no World Cup in Qatar this year. So they, there's well, there was no World Cup last year either, I guess. I get I, I get I guess there shouldn't, <laughs> there shouldn't be it? any Where more World Cups in the winter <laughs> anyway. Right. As it all goes. Uh, let's clean up some more. <laughs> Um, some more uh, super chats. Uh, cactus cooler and and Munchos chips. Have, have you had Munchos chips? I don't think I've ever. Is it? Is it? I, I don't that, know. Those the one where it's a mix of all the different kinds of chips. It could be. I have to Google that. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, LA Galaxy Outsider uh, two dollar super chat. Uh, Goose creamy coconut Dr Pepper. Uh, you know, I'm generally in favor of most Dr. Pepper flavors. I feel like they, I like vanilla, right? The vanilla Dr. Pepper is mm-hmm. always good. I Matt, I don't know that I've had creamy coconut. Have you had a dirty soda? A dirty soda? I don't believe I have. What is okay, a dirty so soda? I, I believe it's a thing in Utah because they don't drink coffee. So they, you know, mix coffee creamer right. half and half with their sodas. There's a place that opened up around us called Swig. One of my neighbors actually opened a cookie shop also called Crave Cookie Shop. Okay. And so... They sell dirty sodas, and it's basically soda with, with half and half flavor with half and half, or your or coconut milk, or all these different things. So, Dr Pepper, one of them that they make is the Dr Pepper with like raspberry puree, and then a half and half in it, or a creamer, and it's it's delicious. Well, so, yeah, when I, I, I had I don't know about the specific creamy coconut right. flavor right. sanctioned Dr Pepper, but right. if you have a dirty soda, or you find somewhere right. that sells dirty sodas, or if you're on a road trip to Real Salt Lake. Uh, look up one of those places because it's it's a good time. When I come visit you, will you take me to these places? We For sure. We'll go there? on the golf cart. Yeah. yeah. Me okay, and you in the golf cart. I'm in. Drinking dirty sodas. I'm in. I'm, I'm, I just need to get some time off from my wife. She, she needs to watch the kid. We have adult things to do, like go drink dirty sodas. Um, Scott, <laughs> just by the two way. two dudes drinking dirty sodas. <laughs> look at us. <laughs> look at us. Who would have thought? <laughs> uh, I was trying to do that. I So on Vancouver Radio, I had that all set up. Like to be like whenever they were like, I figured that the lead in might be something like, like the number, the two top teams in the Western Conference. And I wanted to just be like, look yeah. at us, look at us, you know, the whole deal. And it didn't, it didn't work. They wasn't, the lead in was not there. They didn't give it ah. to me. And I was like, oh man, we could have, uh, you know, and the people of Vancouver could have been graced with my Paul, Paul Rudd uh, <laughs> impression. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just copying somebody else who's smarter and funnier than me. Uh, Scott, by the way, $5 super chat. Let's kick the Smurfs back up to San Jose. Love the show, guys. PSA, get your checkups and list your body. Scott, we're always pulling for you. We appreciate your time. Thanks for stopping by, buddy. Uh, get some rest and we'll see you soon. All right. Uh, yeah, PSA, check your PSA. Appreciate that, Scott. I, it was good. It was, it it was, was right he there. He knows. He knows. He knows. He uh, knew what he was doing. Uh, Philip, by the way, $2 super chat. Don't ever take sides against the galaxy <laughs> ever. See? I mean. More Godfather stuff there. I we, like it. We're, we're rocking and rolling. $5 super chat. Guys, did you go over the match announcers and the referee for the weekend? I have not. And I didn't. Even, I don't even look it up. I will look it up before we go. Um, and then $5 a super chat from Eduardo. Dr. Pepper Beans. I have not gone that far. I'm going to be. Yes. Yes? D- well, Jelly well, they, there's Dr. Pepper beans. No, no, no. And then no, there's no. Dr. Pepper jelly yeah, beans there's, also. There's yeah. Dr. But there's Pepper actually like the refried can, yeah. beans, right? Yeah. Or yeah, or or not refried. Is it uh, baked beans, like, right? Baked yeah, beans. Yeah, yeah, baked beans. Uh, baked baked beans for their doctor. And then there are the jelly, the jelly belly Dr. Pepper ones. Yes, yeah. obviously. I'm I'm glad we're. we're <laughs> well, this is why you got to come here. The the Dr. Pepper Museum is in Waco, Texas. Oh, we make a road trip. Make it a thing. I, uh, why not? Why not? I went to the place where they apparently created Pepsi. It was let. It was not that impressive. Yeah, just it like feels Pepsi. Like it be. Just like Pepsi. Just saying. Um, let's see. I was gonna go to MLSsoccer.com. So you, could, you guys can can hang in there and wait while I just look <laughs> stuff up. Well, did we want to talk about Ventura County? That is officially uh, that game was postponed or the kickoff time was it, changed, it, right? It's, so it's it was moved, right? So and yeah. let me see if I can. Did I, I had it here? It is. Um, so yeah, it's still, it still says 7 PM on my graphic cause I still had my graphic from last week, but it is changed to 1 PM. We had, uh, everybody's favorite soccer mom, Sarah Neal on, on Monday night. Uh, and she reminded us, of course, that it is at 1 PM. So 1 PM, 1 PM, 1 PM, 1 PM, everybody 1 PM. Okay. What <laughs> time? 1 PM. I can't, All if right, I say so. it again, I won't understand. I won't understand how I will. It, the word will fail to make sense to me anymore. 
Um, but yeah, so Ventura County, they're also getting ready, I think, to sell tickets and start doing that for, for actually playing up at Cal Lutheran. And, and so the, the whole model behind this, and I think we've sort of talked about this, but I think that, uh, the San Jose did this and then all of a sudden they sold like 5,000 tickets. Do you have to understand that selling 5,000 tickets to something or doing something like that is, is all money that the LA galaxy, the LA galaxy two like could not have. They didn't have it. They, they used to sell tickets to G2 games. It wasn't really that popular. People yeah. didn't really, you know, I, I always got in for free, so I don't you know. It was one of those, it's, but <laughs> you know, I heard other people had to pay and it's just, it just wasn't, it's, it's not sustainable in that venue. I would believe this is an interesting approach to it. I don't know how it works and I don't know that I have an opinion on it. I just think it's interesting to sort of watch and yeah. sit back and, and observe it. I saw someone compare it to minor league baseball. Yes, so I did. You know, my, yeah, okay. okay, so uh, basically, you know, when you're not ha- naming it a reserve team, you're calling it a different name, still affiliated with the club, but you're kind of making it its own thing. So a lot of people don't like that kind of with the <laughs> USAification of soccer and some of the, uh, you know, not making it the world's game and making it their own different things. But I can see the positives behind it if you make it a little more, you know, have some different, um, you know, theme nights have some different things to kind of bring people in, make it a little bit more accessible than maybe your average uh, MLS game or your average professional game, just to kind of give it a little bit of a different spin to it, give it a little bit of different branding to some of these teams. I can see the thinking behind it and making it a thing. And so I, I credit them for trying it. I'm with you. I don't know if it's going to pan out. I don't know if Ventura County is going to grab a whole new fan base that's not already Galaxy fans and gonna are going to like it on its own. Uh, on its own merit for a different product that I don't know if that's going to work out at the MLS next pro level, but I also don't fault them for trying something like this out because to your point, it's not like these reserve games were filling the bleachers and people were dying to get to these games. I think, you know, having Sarah Neal come on and say, this is at the track and field stadium. It's the last hurrah. Let's get everyone to come out. It's a nice, you know, gesture and it's kind of the romanticism of it all. But the reality is these games were, are not, they're not greatly attended. And so I think going in with a different approach is not necessarily a bad thing. So I'm curious to see how it's going to pan out for Ventura County. Yeah, I am. Uh, by the way, I'm looking for referee stuff and uh, I don't see it per I even went to MLS referee stats who usually has all the, uh, all the referee stats uh, sitting out there. So if you guys know who the referee is, let me know. And, and we I did I, get the announced team. Yeah. who do you, who, who, uh, Oh, so, I do know who the announced yeah, team is. Go so, ahead. You can say it. Yeah, so Adam, two dollars super chat was able to. They're paying us to to figure out who the to tell like us this. who the announcement. I actually so, I actually knew this. I, Max, can't, I can't believe I forgot, but yes. But Max on. Bretos and Brian Dunseth. So again, some some ties to Southern California, the Los Angeles area. So again, Dunny's always a fun fun time to listen to. So again, those are going to be your your MLS announcers right. uh, on Apple TV. And then I, I don't know who's going to do it for FS1, but it's a home game, so you always have the. Oh, you know, radio home broadcast to Mr. Joe Totino. Yep. I think that's the way switch to go that over. Yeah. That's, yeah. I, switch that over. <laughs> but by the way, one of my favorite people in all world, Brian Dunseth, just yeah. amazingly nice man. Uh, He's every someone who I always enjoyed listening to, even though I had no dog in the fight for RSL, but he, you know, I, I love his, his play by play. No, so it's one of those where I'm kind of torn on which maybe I'll do a half and half or make my own little dirty soda mixture on my audio experience this weekend. I, I like it. It's not a problem. I just uh, to take you way back, way back in the day uh, when Twitter was still a positive place and you could connect with people. Uh, Dunny and I would, would, would connected and like he was like, hey, make sure you come see me. Like, you know, he was like, come see me in the booth. Like, stop by, say hi, like the whole deal. And I went in like nervous because I'm like, oh, my God, it's Brian Dunseth. Like, you know, you watch this guy, the whole bumpy pitch stuff. I had bumpy pitch stuff like crazy, too. So I was a big fan of his and got in and just was like the nicest man. And then because we connected and because he used to be a staple on the show all the time, he would cover RSL. We knew if we were playing RSL that we would reach out to Brian and he would come on and and do all that stuff. So just amazing. I just had a hip hip surgery, by the way, if you've been watching on his Instagram, he's already like back to running like, you know, a bazillion miles. He's annoying. Uh, it's those pro athletes who continue to have that pro athlete body well past, you know, their, their playing times that get really annoying. I have more, uh, I'll, I'd say this today. I have more respect for the guys who just are like, now I can eat all those hot dogs and hamburgers and everything else. And, you know, just, <laughs> just let my body go to waste, you know, it's a skill. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's see. I'm looking, I'm looking referee is Rosendo Mendoza. Um, so I, another one of those where we're like, I was going to say, we're getting a lot of newbies this season. I don't know if this is intentional or not. Uh, it worked out, uh, at Vancouver did not work out, uh, for, for the previous game, uh, before that with LAFC. So 
who, who knows how this is working out. But we do have some new rules and some new wrinkles. So we'll see how how well they these new referees adjust to that. So we want to we want to talk about that. Get to yeah. Adam's super chat real quick. Five dollar super chat. Center referee is Rosendo Mendoza, and VAR is Chris Penso. Any thoughts? I actually have no problems with Chris Penso. Never have. Uh, let letting that one go. This is not. This is not a. Uh, Oh, what's his name in uh, in Major League Baseball? Uh, uh, the, oh, yeah, the umpire, Angel, right? Angel, uh, Angel Hernandez, right? Yeah. Angel Hernandez. In, yeah, yeah, Angel. I kept one. I I know what I wanted to say, and it was wrong, and because I didn't like that person either. Uh, it was it was it was Angel Hernandez, and, and that type of thing. He's not that, so I, I think there's no issues. We'll see what it all comes down to. I've had relatively little issues with with most of the refereeing this year, but there's been some big blown calls. It's funny now to see other people sort of parroting, though, outside of people who just follow the LA Galaxy, Eric, of people who are parroting the fact that the LA Galaxy have gotten, like, just jobbed on two calls that yeah. cost them points. They're like, it's, it's like the LA Galaxy are first in the Western Conference, they have this many points, and they lost three points to really yeah. bad calls. Like, you know, it's like, it's like, yeah, That's, I know. I, 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 I always, there. I always say that I say it all the time. Is it me or everybody? Cause when you're a galaxy fan, you're too close to it. You think you're always going to hate Chris Penso or, or whoever the referee is, because you're just, well, if you make a call against my team, you're obviously wrong. But to see other people kind of say the same things who are, you know, neutrals, I think that makes you feel a little bit better about where they could be in the standings. Let's talk about the new rules coming out. And this is part of the new uh, competition initiatives that MLS was supposed to roll out from day one. But because of the lockout and uh, all of the collective bargaining agreement and all that sort of fun stuff, it got withheld. Right. So one of the things that was also in there was the clock that continues to run during injury time. Right. And if you've been at the stadium, we've seen that that has already been implemented. It's been a fun one. So uh, the first one that will be implemented starting this weekend, starting with the April 20th games is the off-field treatment rule. The off-field treatment rule allows medical professionals with time to assess to treat players off the field to play in less pressurized environment. If a player with a suspected injury remains on the ground for more than 15 seconds, the referee will stop play and wave the medical crew onto the field to evaluate the player. When safe, the player will be removed from the field and remain off the field for a minimum of two minutes for further assessment and treatment. Uh, they said this was first implemented in MLS Next Pro midway through the 2022 season and continued through the entirety of the 2023 season. Uh, the rules allowed medical staff's time to treat players while also allowing match play to resume quickly, right? So the idea is I, I, what it really is and what they don't say in this is this is a you better not roll around on the ground and pretend like you're hurt because if you yeah. are and you're longer, we're calling the medical team out. And once I call the medical team out, you have to be off the field for two minutes. That's what this is. So whenever you watch this, there are exceptions to the off-field treatment rule, uh, including instances of potential head injury, goalkeeper injury, serious medical events, and fouls resulting in yellow or red cards. So if somebody gets fouled and there's a yellow card, that rule doesn't necessarily apply, right? Um, yeah. And same with red cards, that type of thing. But this isn't about any of that stuff. This is about guys rolling around on the ground, pretending <laughs> they're hurt for long periods of time and slowing down the game, right? The, this is, I always was uh, in favor of whenever a player goes down to injury and maybe you're out of subs, I always thought you should be able to sub someone on because it's not their fault they got injured. But how do you prevent people from faking the injury? So my fix to that would always say, well, if you're going to if you're going to be subbed and you're out of substitutions, then the player who you sub off to injury has to miss the next game because presumably if they're injured, then they're not going to be able to play the next game anyway. But if they faked it, then the penalty is, you know, they don't get to play the next game. So I think this is a version of that. If you're going to roll around, that's fine. You can roll around and fake it if you really want to sell the foul. But at the same time, if you're down for more than 15 seconds, then you're going to serve that time waiting. You're not going to get back up and spring to life like we've seen players do that all of a sudden, I'm healed, that's a miracle, and then they're back up and everything's good. So I like the spirit of it, but the one thing that makes me nervous, and we'll talk about the other rules as well, is this is always down to referee discretion as well. So it's going to be who's keeping the timer. Is this something that VAR is going to look at? When does the clock start? Is it when you stop rolling? Is it when you're on the ground? So I'm curious to see how this is going to be implemented and who becomes the first test case that's going to be made an example out of this. Yeah. Yeah, show it to me. Show it to me how it's going to be equitably uh, attributed across everything. So uh, the other one is the time substitution rule. Again, looking at time wasting. Uh, the time substitution rule requires that substituted players exit the field within 10 seconds. One, two, three. By the way, by the way, <laughs> this, is, this is definitely one of those times where like supporters get in on it. As soon as they call for a substitution, you start <laughs> counting faster. You know how like whenever yeah. the whenever the goalkeeper has the ball and you count faster than 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, oh, ten, ten, right? And you yell and scream. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the whole deal. So 
Um, that's that's something that I expect uh, will come in this. But basically, you have 10 seconds to get off the field. Uh, failure to exit from any point in the field within the 10 seconds will cause the incoming player to wait for a 60-second holding period before entering the game at the next stoppage. Let's be very, very clear about that. Um, before Exceptions to the rule include injury and goalkeeper substitutions. The, the really interesting thing about this is that it's the 60-second period. You have to be off for one minute. That means you're not eligible to return for, or you're not eligible to put the other person in for one minute if you don't make it off in the 10 seconds, right? That doesn't mean that at the end of one minute, you automatically get to come in. It says at the next stoppage of play. If the That's ball doesn't go out, wrinkle, yeah. right? Like if you're a team and you're up, right? And you have control of the game and you know that dude just missed it and he's sitting over there and he has to wait for the next stoppage to play. You play keep away for the next six minutes, right? Like it's like we already got a man up. Yeah. Keep the ball away. Don't let him back on the field. It's the next stoppage could be significant impacts. Basically, they go on to say, Eric, that uh, they had over 3,200 substitutions or 99.7% of all substitutions in MLS Next Pro were made in that 10 seconds or less. Yeah. So I think when, once once this, the the rule is in place, then I think it's naturally going to speed it up. I was kind of making fun of the people who don't like the Amer Americanification of, of soccer with some of these rule changes in MLS kind of being funny for what it is. But I think this is a change for the better. I think one thing that a lot of people don't like is the flopping and the exaggerating. I'm uh, of the I'm a believer in the dark arts. I think there's there's a time and place for it, and there's a way to kind of where it becomes gamesmanship. But I also I'm not mad if you're going to police it and do it the right way to to fix the game and make it go go smoother. And so the players are playing soccer most of the time right. instead of not playing soccer. I'm always going to be in favor of that. I I, I it, we'll, we'll see how it all goes. I'm interested to make sure that every if we had more time with Greg, I wanted to ask him this That's, new stuff. Do you, yes. Yeah, do you explicitly have this conversation? Right? Like, do you hold a team meeting to talk about this? This is going to be one that does absolutely nothing. I want to be very clear about that. <laughs> absolutely nothing. This is not going to make you feel better about any VAR call. You're going to get the same information that you got before just in a physical or, or I guess an audio, an audible form that you were going to be like, okay, yeah. It's not like the referee is going to explain this decision. So please don't like, well, I talked to me, <laughs> the referee This basically what we're talking about in stadium VAR announcements. Uh, they will be explained and announced by the referee to fans and stadium broadcast viewers at home. There was contact in the box penalty. That's all you're mm -hmm. going to get, right? Like, so if you disagree with it and you're like, hey, I just watched VAR and like, let's go back to the LAFC game with, mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, with Yoshida. So Freeman would have came out and said there was contact in the box penalty. You would have yep. missed the entire context of VAR begging him basically <laughs> to overturn his call yeah. because he was incorrect. And then pro came out and said, you were incorrect. This is still going to happen in stadium of VAR announcements will not matter at all, but I hope you guys all enjoy referees talking on microphones <laughs> to me I, I have a different take i think okay, it good. is going to impact the game but i think it's going to do it for the worse because you are going to have someone like freeman who maybe they think it's a penalty maybe they don't they're a little bit uneasy but with you when you're at the home stadium you don't want to make that announcement in front of people and risk being booed so you're you're, you're going to make the call in favor of the home team I, I think i mentioned this just about every time it comes up on why home field advantage is a thing i think malcolm gladwell did a study on you know is home field advantage a real thing and it has nothing to do with the players sleeping in their beds or the home stadium environment it has to do with the officials the referees because they're human beings and they don't like getting booed right. whether it's intentional or, or not or subconsciously they don't want to get booed so they're naturally going to call more have more calls in favor of the home team so if you apply that and extrapolate it out to this rule, I think it's going to go in favor of the home team because there's not going to be the, I mean, you could have some heel officials, some guys yep. who go pro wrestling and, you know, welcome the thumbs down. Yeah. You know what? It is a penalty. And then you can smirk <laughs> at the crowd, but I think you may see this kind of backfire in terms of having more decisions in favor, quite, you know, maybe 50, 50 decisions. They're going to give the benefit of the doubt to the home team because naturally they may not want to get booed or deal with, uh, you know, the things that happen. You, you hope and you would wish that they're robots and they're partial impartial and they're going to call things the right way. But at the end of the day, they're human beings and these things happen. Did, did you, in the chat room, did you pull out a Fotis Bazakos? That's you, my goat. That's I your, love that's, your, <laughs> that's my guy. That, the, the guy who I'll won, never forget that name. The, the, yeah. the guy who once let Rolf Felcher get kicked in the ab <laughs> abdomen in the box and then said away that he initiated yep. the contact. He initiated the contact. Not, not, so we'd get Fotis Bazakos saying, yes. Rolf Felcher head-butted a cleat. <laughs> No penalty. No penalty, right? 
<laughs> Isn't that what we want? Isn't this great for the oh, game? Oh, that's funny. Uh, let's see. I got that one. Somebody said I missed some super chats. Oh, I did. LA Galaxy Outsider has one that I will not say, but I welcome the, <laughs> we the Wayne's World we reference. You, no. I, I'm there. I say it all the time, but I'm not going to say it here. $2 super chat. Thank you. Um, and uh, and we, I think we talked about Adam, right? Um, yes, oh, referee, can you do that. your Paul Rudd impression? Was one from Gary. $2 super chat. I was, it was just, it was going to be like, look at us. Look at us. You know, that, that was it. That was that was going to be it. There's nothing <laughs> else thought? to that. Who would have thought? thought yeah. Like, there was nothing else to that. There's all you need to do is say the look at us and everybody knows yeah. what it is. Okay. Which, which to that point, again, we're already off the rails. We're continuing to go off the rails. That's from the show Hot Ones. And that was yes. just a Hall of Fame reaction. Conan O'Brien absolutely cemented himself <laughs> in the Internet Hall of Fame. I used this whole past weekend. I was tweeting Conan O'Brien videos from yes. his episode of Hot Ones. So yes. if you've been living under a rock or you're not on, chronically online like I am, go check out Conan O'Brien uh, on Hot Ones because he's just it's a master class in creating internet memes. All right. And Eduardo gave us the five dollar that was the Dr. Pepper beans. We talked about that one. We got LA Galaxy Insider <laughs> again. Wayne's World what Reference. A chat. Thank you. Again, Appreciate it. Nothing about the game, nothing about Greg Vanny, just no. all Dr. Pepper Beans and Wayne's World references. All I right. love it. I think I think I got all of them. Let me know if I missed any other ones. Give me give me screen names that I missed, but I'm trying to keep them all straight. Um, I wanted to go to uh, uh, basically just this one thing. They have the Golden Boot Race going on. The crazy thing is that you're going to hear about you know uh, Christian Arango, right? Chicho Arango. You're going to hear about Ben Teke. You're going to hear about Luis Morgan, who I've heard a lot about. You're going to hear about Luis Suarez. Uh, Luis Suarez. I, mean, I kind of like said it in both things, right? You, <laughs> I was going to say the, the that guy? one driver. Yeah, yeah. That, that way. That way. Um, uh, Lionel Messi. I'm sure you've heard of that guy too, right? So <laughs> like you go through all these. The craziest thing to me is that Dejan Jovalich is sandwiched in between all these guys, tied with six goals at the top of everything. And he's doing it. Somebody called him my tap-in king. And yeah. <laughs> I just... I'm just, I just, I, there's if a I'm skill here, in that too. There's a skill. To just embrace We've, that. Both yeah. hands all the way around it. You are the <laughs> tapping. I don't care because you being in that right spot is exactly where you're supposed to be. And I, that was another question I had for Greg and if we had more time. Uh, usually with Greg, and uh, this is not a knock, it's just he he will talk. And you'll, yeah. so I always knew like, like 15 answers, minutes, yeah. we're going to get like four questions, five questions tops. That's going to be it. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, that's where we're, uh, we're going, uh, with yeah, that. But it, it's, I feel like the, the day on conversation is very similar to the galaxy conversation. They could have even more points and be sitting on top of the supporters shield standing. Day on could have two or three more goals in there if he just had a few different looks, but we also go back to our preseason podcast before everything began. We said, if Pinsil just kicks the ball off his chest or, and, or, you know, and Peck kicks it off the post and bounces off Dion's head and goes in, I will take that all the way to the bank, to right. the golden boot. Right. And I will, I will, I will lift Dion over my shoulders and he'll be my champion of the season. And, and that will be that because that you, you have to be there. You have to be in the right place at the right time. Part of being a striker, it's, you know, uh, it is having the skill to finish, but a lot of it is being in the right place at the right time. And so give credit to Dayon where maybe it's not, he's not there all the time for 90 minutes, right. but if he's there once, that's all you need him to do. And, and indeed, uh, Philip calls him a tap in merchant. Perhaps, yeah. perhaps. Absolutely. Fine uh, that. I'm here. I wish I was a tap in merchant. Yeah. Everybody. Uh, I, I would take that job <laughs> in a heartbeat. Um, let's see just all the different games that are going on here. I'm trying to think Columbus and Portland is a fun one. Uh, that's one I would watch Miami and Nashville. I I'm still on. The, I don't know if I'm on the fence about Nashville or what I think about Nashville. Um, 14th in the Eastern conference. That doesn't seem right. Right. That doesn't yeah. feel right, but they have not been playing well. Um, you know, they have one win and, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. One win. Is that right? One win, two losses and four draws. Jeez, that's a lot. That's, tough. that's, that's, a, that's a tough way. Yeah. They feel very similar to Seattle. Well, you know, the the core is kind of getting older and maybe they need some of a refresh or a rebuild. It feels the same way. Nashville and Seattle were good for so long that this is their dip season where they kind of need to, to rearrange and get things going. Yep. Montreal playing really well with Laurent Courtois up there, right? A former LA Galaxy 2 head coach, I believe, or at least was an assistant coach down with LA Galaxy 2. I remember talking to him whenever he was doing mm -hmm. with G2. Former, former LA Galaxy, Galaxy players, player. Yeah. Yep, yep, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, he was always great. Uh, I didn't, but again, I'd never saw him being head coach of Montreal. Like that didn't, it didn't seem like that was ever in the cards. <laughs> so he's doing great. 
great uh, with Montreal in there. I'm trying to see uh, New York City and and uh, DC United. That's a good rivalry game uh, going on there. Anything else that I see that is anything worth interest? Like Sporting Kansas no, City I, and St. Louis. Like, are you? Eh, I'm not there. I yet, think you right? said it. You said it. Columbus and Portland yeah. is there. In Miami and Nashville. Okay. Those are the ones. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Good. And then. You know, Galaxy versus San Jose, of course. Charlotte, Minnesota actually is not a bad shout. That's actually a pretty, that should be a pretty oh, yeah. good game. The, the, talk about are they back or are they for real? Minnesota, that's one of those to keep an eye on as well. Uh, you do, are you, are you, they for real? Yeah. yeah. Now that they got a real coach, are they, are they you know, wh- wh- what's going on? Like, how's how's that whole thing working for them? Um, <laughs> just sort of sitting in that set. They have 11 points. Again, it's it sort of feels bunched in the in that in that Western Conference a little bit. Um, there's a lot of I don't know yet. Um, Bob, by the way, five dollars super chat, and then we'll get into uh, getting you ready for San Jose. Uh, why did the uh, disciplinary committee find and review LAFC's Murillo for simulation and not Buanga uh, VAR related? Uh, there's, there's, I've found no competent explanation whatsoever. Um, yeah. I, I can't, I can't tell you. They've I already, got nothing for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I told you that. Like, I wasn't like saying, oh, Disco's not doing it. Right? Like, I didn't say that because they just they decided that they weren't going to review it. They were like, now nah, we're not going to look at it. And it's like. Okay, but it is everybody- bizarre, especially with the controversy over the call and with them, you know, <laughs> pro referees coming out with the video explaining that it should have been, uh, it was simulation. They, the pro referee, their video said that it was simulation yes. and that he should have been given a yellow card. So, what the disco is doing outside of that point, I don't know. I feel like there's panic at the disco. What, well, very nice. Um, good night, everybody. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's one of those. The interesting thing is the punishment because of it would have been simulation leading to a penalty kick or leading to a, a goal, basically. Um, that that actually carries a steeper fine, steeper penalty mm-hmm. than just a fine, it carries a suspension. Um, which again, you know, it's like they didn't want to go that far. Get rid of the golden goose. Like I, I, it just, it just feels, it's a very interesting look and maybe they have a technical reason why they can't do it. I don't know, but they're not certainly not coming out and saying anything, but they did not look at it. They were like, nope, we're good. Um, let's see, uh, Fredo, uh, $5 super shot. Never rest easy. Uh, $5. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, Fredo. Um, let's see anything else. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> they're rolling in, you yeah. know, Greg Vanny brings, we us have him on again next week. Well, yeah, Greg, could you show up every week? That'd be great. <laughs> uh, we'll just have a standing like Tom Brady on the radio every week, there right? That type of thing. Um, so, uh, the LA galaxy getting ready to play San Jose in the 100th edition of the Cali Classico across all competitions, right? So it's all competitions, the 100th edition of this particular matchup, LA versus San Jose four, one and three, one, seven and zero again, number one or tied for number one in the, uh, in major league soccer. And then, uh, in very, very 29th. last 29th, all the way down to the bottom there. So, uh, one of the big things coming up is, uh, DJ Z trip. will have his particular set coming up. Uh, before the game, just like they've been doing the DJ sets. So that's going to be fun to sort of see. Uh, it says the grass will be open, so you can check out the set with the exclusive view uh, on the berm there. So that'll be good. The weather looks like it's not going to rain this weekend, so that's always nice too. It's been yeah. raining every and, and, weekend. And for the people who are being curmudgeons about not liking the DJ sets, I, I, appreciate, I, I like that they're going for it. I like that they're doing something different. The Ravi drums, again, I wasn't at the game, but it looked like it was really cool. I like, I like the effort. So, hey, Smile, have some fun for a little bit. It's okay to have fun and to do something a little bit different. I understand, you know, there's a almost want to be like a too cool for school type of thing where why do we need these DJs doing it? But I, I think it's it's a cool it's thing fun. that they're doing, especially, yeah, it's a, to me, it, it gets the vibe right and gets everyone excited the, before the games. The Robbie drums thing was was interesting. I will say that it is <laughs> it is a uh, it's a unique take on like a DJ set that you're going to be yeah. playing the drums while you sort of have like a mix set sort of ready for you and doing that. And then you can interact with the crowd a little bit while you're playing the drums. It's interesting. I don't know if it carries like I'm, I'm like, OK, I sort of get for a it. stadium. It's a yeah. little tricky. Yeah, yeah. I think it's I'm harder. just a fan of the Blue Man group. So okay. that's my thing right there. OK, good. I'm, I'm all fan. I didn't I didn't know you were a Blue Man man, <laughs> a Blue Man man. What is it? What are their fans I'm, called? You don't I was, know. I was going to say, I, I'm, I'm not going to say what I want to say. So okay. I'm gonna leave it at that. Good. Uh, LA 44 wins, San Jose 33 wins and 18 draws between these two teams. Uh, as I looked on my fancy dancy sheet that I had before we started all this, the LA galaxy have quite a winning streak, uh, or at least an unbeaten streak against San Jose. Uh, they are winners of four of the last five against San Jose. Um, and on, and they had four of, uh, they basically have been unbeaten in those five, right? So uh, a really big, nice streak for the Galaxy to have right now. Uh, but one that I think is a sort of dangerous one to continue. We talk about yeah. the roulette situations and all that, but watching what happened to San Jose against Colorado 
leads me to believe that San Jose was not be exactly thrilled uh, with taking the three nothing loss and sort of having to explain themselves on why they couldn't score a single goal in that game, despite the many chances. And I'd say good chances that they had. So um, I, I don't know, Eric, this one feels and it teeters like it's one of those where one is that I want to be crystal clear. Galaxy should win this game. Yes, that goes without saying. Right, <laughs> first place versus twenty ninth place. I think that's fair. Right, and you're at home. There's no reason not to. Right. Yeah, um, and, I, it, it, and I always go back to this is the thing that I say when we preview these games, looking at their rosters. Or, you know, who are the players that scare you? And so when you look at their rosters from this previous game, Jeremy Abovici is always someone who scares you. Christian Espinosa is another one who maybe causes some worries. But outside of that you look at a team that really doesn't have pieces that are scary. And so obviously you're going to have to worry about those one or two key players. But when we think about how the galaxy have been handling the opposition, especially from open play, have shutting down some of these key players in key moments. I think that, you know, my Yoshida and the defense, you know, someone like Gaston Brugman as well can go in and shut down someone like Abobasi. And then that leaves the door wide open for Peck and Paintsil to do their thing and push to continue to drop his dimes. And then, of course, for our tap in King to do his thing. So I think everything is kind of setting itself up well. Just when you look at that lineup, I, I just feel like <laughs> I, I feel like the, the points are going to be there for the, th- the taking year about, you know, trap game and all the roulette wheel and all those fun things. I also think back about Preston Judd. He got his goal against the Galaxy yeah, in the he's last game. Yeah. So I think that's done. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. It's done. You've used your credit, so that's not coming back. So it's I, I, I feel really good about it. I don't know. Do we want D ratings or you have more to say? We can go to D ratings if you'd like. <laughs> D ratings is basically mirroring what we're saying on you being crystal clear that this should be a win. The Galaxy, 63.6% chance to win. I think that's the biggest percentage that they've had to win all season long. 164 for San Jose, and then a 20% chance for a draw. If you look at the money line, the Galaxy are at minus 170. So again, you're taking a big loss uh, if you're trying betting on the Galaxy. They're expected to win. If you want San Jose, that's plus 400. So you'd have to be, you know... A, pretty living feeling pretty dangerous or, or know some inside information about the galaxy. If you're going to put some money on San Jose, cause it's a big payout there over under is at three and a half goals. So not only are they expecting the galaxy to win, but they're expecting them to win by multiple goals. So I think you're expecting a two zero three zero game. Right. Uh, and I, I have to feel like I, I feel the same. Yeah. I do the galaxy. Can they get a shutout? Does that be number two, right? It'd be nice. It'd be, <laughs> it's been close. I just, I think San Jose is um, a decent enough counterattacking team. I just, uh, <laughs> I was listening to Tom Bogert and he was sort of saying, they don't have the difference makers, right? They don't have the guys. Mm-hmm. You're not like, uh, Christian Espinosa is, is a great number 10 and you really like him, but, you know, 13 goals, 13 assists last year. This year, it just doesn't seem like he has the, 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 the weapons around him, yeah, mm-hmm. to really be dangerous. And because he's really a one man guy, teams can sort of set up and, and, and go off of him. Um, you know, one of the other things that, you know, you can see in this game is just they they don't put chances away. And uh, we talked about it, but San Jose has lost. This is sort of the scary part of it. If they ever get things together, they've lost 12 points from leading positions. San Jose has 12 points. They have three points. They <laughs> lost brutal. 12 yeah. points from leading positions. So in a lot of these games, not the Colorado game um, and not the L.A. Galaxy game, by the way, because the L.A. Galaxy scored first in that game. Did, at one point, was San Jose winning that game? No, because it was it was it was three. No, it was, it was put away. Yeah, it, it was, was put away. Yeah, it was three nothing. Yeah. And it was that second half. Yeah, I was going to say no. So in those games outside of the games, they played against Colorado and the L.A. Galaxy. Basically, they've had leads at one time or another. Um, so yeah, that's where we're, uh, that's where we're at. By the way, the chat has let me know that Taylor Swift has dropped her, her new album it is out. Um, right. so well, I just shut so this I'm, thing down so yeah, we can go, so listen, we can go listen. My wife's probably <laughs> listening right now and she's going to be like, oh my God, it's so good. Uh, $5 super chat from Gary before we go. Soda Vanny, Dr. Pepper Beans, Country Music Stars, Paul Rudd, Dr. Pepper Beans. Thank you both for all the hard work. I love this chat and the show it basically wraps it up. I think <laughs> that's that the was, best. Was yeah. You nailed it, Gary. Protections guaranteed to be wrong, sir. I don't right. know. Was that like half so, Scottish? I don't I, know what that was. Yeah, just no, don't, no. That's not I'm, I'm, I'm going to just ignore it that's and good. keep plugging forward. The last home game, I called the blowout against Seattle, but the weather didn't cooperate. I'm blaming that one on the weather. So I'm literally going to use a rain check, and I'm saying this is going to be the blowout. I'm calling not a shutout, a 5-1 win, though. Five? I think a big – I think we – I've been saying they the, the goals have been there. They've hit the post. They've had opportunities to score five goals in games. They just haven't done it. So I'm going to go crazy. I think this is the game. This The narrative on this year's Galaxy team 
is that they're the polar opposite of last season. The last few few years, you've seen them play down to the competition, not put away those teams that are hovering around last place. So I think this year, I, I believe they're flipping that. They're going to play the teams on the bottom, and they're, they're, they're going to kill the teams on the bottom, and then they'll struggle with the big boys towards the top of the standing. So I think we're due. I think Vanny, the three-game win streak is incoming, but a wise man once told me if you – Want to win three games? You got to win two games first. So let's get the second one out of the way. Big okay. win. Big win. Okay. Um, two nothing. I will go shut out. Two nothing. But okay. I'm going to keep it on the simple side. I would like it to be more comfortable. I would like the LA Galaxy to put a game away. I like your five one, except that I see this LA Galaxy team is going up like three nothing and sort of being like, we're done. We don't need any more. Okay. That's it. Like, shut it down. I actually want to see them, and I think we praised them whenever they played San Jose last time, of shutting the game down. Of yeah, putting and that being thir- calm and just, yeah, yeah. And just, who cares? It doesn't matter. You don't have to score any more goals. If you want to, that's fine. But rest up for the next game. So you look at the schedule as it's coming. The more the LA Galaxy can get out to early leads, to put games away, to shut everything down, or the better off they're going to be. The best teams in the league put teams away early, and then they get to rest. Right, you want Joseph Paintsill coming off in the 65th minute because the Galaxy are winning for nothing. You don't want him yeah. running any more minutes than that, right? You want, you know, <laughs> guys like you want to be able to sub Ricky Pooj out, right? Because yeah. that way he's not getting chopped the whole yeah, time. Get, yeah, get him off. Yeah, let, let let Miguel Berry be the star of the show for the evening. You know, get get Johnny Perez in the game. I think I think you're right in that regard. I also want to just go back to my my blowout prediction that I'm not saying that they're going to put anything extra to this game. I've seen the opportunities there where they could have had, you know, we saw them beat Vancouver 3-1, but a bounce goes their way once or twice a different game, and boom, that's four or five goals. I think the opportunities are there, and this could just be one of those games where you have a team like San Jose is maybe already talk themselves out of it. Right. Uh, and so you just see them fall apart and the galaxy just gets rolling. Maybe Miguel Berry comes off the bench and gets his goals and, and starts firing. You know, who Exciting. knows? Who knows how this is going to work out? Exciting. Uh, pre-game party at Galaxy Park. Fans are encouraged to stop by the pre-game ga- party at Galaxy Park where they can take part in a wide range of activities before gates open at 3.30 p.m. for Sunday's match between L.A. and San Jose. Uh, there's a fan giveaway. A limited supply of player signed 2024 L.A. Galaxy One Planet pre-match top will be included in the Dignity Health t shirt toss prior to the match between the galaxy and earthquakes additionally uh sunhari will be providing 10,000 la galaxy and sunhari co-branded led keychains for fans to grab as they exit the match exit you're not gonna have those during the game nice try <laughs> uh, you're not gonna blind the no, keeper come on no nice yeah yeah get suspended for 11 games uh z trip pregame dj set we talked about merchandise the la galaxy uh one planet pre-match top the angelinos kit the 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 kit hook collection are all available at purchase at the la galaxy team store uh soccer fest alumni autographs uh, including LA Galaxy players Alan Gordon and Sean Franklin, two of my faves too. Just Alan Gordon, guys. he's sporting a great mustache recently as well. May Just the to, man was the man was made for a mustache. We never realized it. I may have to slide on over. It depends on what time I can get there. But they're supposed to be on hand to greet fans from three forty five to four forty five. Um, Cosmo Cadets, the LA Galaxy Foundation, and LA Galaxy Programming will have their usual booths. Uh, LA Galaxy Foundation will be there. Papusas, all that fun stuff, right? So we got we got a lot of stuff going on. So make sure you're there at the stadium a little bit early, uh, and we'll get you rock and rolling. Uh, the LA Galaxy take on San Jose at five fifteen. Is your TV start? time supposedly uh 525 is your kick i imagine fox will start at five um but i don't have their programming in front of me and that's okay because you guys will find one place or another <laughs> to watch it or you'll watch it at the stadium so uh, it's free you'll say. figure it out yeah i was gonna say if you're a listener of this show i mean maybe we're getting some new listeners with the vanny rub but again i think you're capable if you're a fan of the galaxy of finding out at this point where to watch the game yeah uh, got a couple more super chats rolling. yeah i know we got it but we got it I, I would say stop but don't stop uh adam <laughs> i'll go here I'll, I'll go all night baby let's go uh adam two dollar super chat jorge via fania had an excellent career in mls was an excellent mls player like you talk yeah. about the guys i always say there's some guys that like were just around and they played and you don't see them and you don't talk about them all that much, but they got minutes. I mean, we talk about Diego Fagundes and, and sort of the 70 yeah. and 70 and what that takes to make that accomplish. Mm-hmm. It just, just grinds, just grinding in and out every day. 16 
Uh, he started when he was 16 years old. And 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 uh, Jorge Villafania is another guy who's just been in an MLS uh, for a long time and and just a, a great long career with uh, with uh, a bunch of different teams. Mostly, I think yeah. of him when, like with Portland. Right? Portland, yeah, he, uh, to yeah. me, he's a Portland player. But at the same time, once a GO, he's a G. So respect to Villafania. Uh, Metalhead, nah, five dollars super chat. Let's get this win. This horrible against this horrible San Jose team. See you on Sunday, Josh. Eric, come to a game. Uh, to complete the ha- meet up at halftime. Yeah, I mean, you need to. I, I yeah. agree. Well, you're, I, you're oddly enough, everything. you know, stay tuned. Towards the end of May, beginning of summer, I might, uh, I might, I might be at a game. There might be, you know, I might leave Dallas to go watch Dallas play uh, at Dignity Health Sports Park. So the the irony in that would be funny. We we were trying. We we should probably do a show or something, right? I mean, if, where, where if did you where out. did you want to do it? Where did you just go? I think El Pescador. El Pescador in June sounds like you know feels I'm, like a good time. You know, El Pescador summer. You got the Modelo's flowing. There's you know Galaxy game. You're near the stadium. Feels right. I don't know. We'll see. We'll reach out. We'll, we'll get some people efforting. We'll see what we can do. All right. Um, Gary says you should move back to California. I just want to say. Yeah, but then I can't go visit and have that dirty soda. Yeah, now the, I need yeah, that. You know, can't come to the Dr. Pepper Museum. I need that, Gary. I need that in my life. Um, all right. Anything else you want to get to? Or are we good? I just have some shout outs. I want to give a shout out to One Two Threads. Uh, they had a, a another successful blue, white, and gold pop-up shop. And then, of course, you see the L.A. Anorak jacket, the voice of the commercial for the Anorak jacket. So, of course, they were nice enough to send uh, to send the hammer uh, jacket himself. So, again, I always love their stuff. I even sent them a message because I saw some pictures of stuff they had at the pop-out. I said, can you send me a couple more things and then <laughs> bill me? So I know I know you were nice enough to send me this because I did the voiceover, but I'm going to pay for more things because I just love the the stuff that they put out. So big shout-out to One Two Threads. If you haven't you know checked them out or got the Anorak jacket, go for it. And then I also want to shout-out Nelson at the LA Galaxy. He's always – you know, reaching out, asking questions and, and always responsive, just killing it when it comes to the merch and the stuff that's uh, being out there. So he's one of the collabs that he's doing is keeping out for the tech decks. Uh, we didn't talk about the giveaways that they're doing at Galaxy Stadium, but in July, July 17th versus uh, the Rapids, they're doing the tech deck giveaway. And that's one of my favorite collabs that I've seen him do. I know they've done it with DGK with the skateboard decks, but the little tech decks is always really cool. And so that's coming in the summer. Shout out to Nelson. He's always making the right moves. So again, he doesn't miss So big shout out to Nelson. Very cool. Awesome. Uh, all right, let's get on out of here then. I, I appreciate everybody for stopping by. I know it was a crazy one, a little off the rails. We made it. We did it. It's time to go listen to some Taylor Swift. Get ready for the game on Sunday. That's all we have left to do. Eric, tell people where they can find you, and we'll get going. Let's go. All right. As always, you can find me on everything at HammerEV9. That's X, the former, former artist, Northwest Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, threads, all the fun things, at HammerEV and the number nine. If you're looking for me on Twitter and X, it's at JGessman, at Galaxy Podcast. Head on over to cornerofthegalaxy.com. Make sure you go visit. Look at our Twitter. We got a shirt out there. We did some shirts a long time ago. I'm just sort of throwing some out every once in a while. Maybe you want one. Maybe you don't. But the best podcast in the galaxy, May 4th, is coming up with you. May 4th be with you, of course. Uh, So make sure you check that out and get that going. All right. Uh, From everybody here at Corner of the Galaxy, we hope you have a great weekend. We will see you on Sunday where the LA Galaxy take on San Jose Earthquakes in the 100th edition of the Cali Classico. For Mr. Eric, the Portuguese Hammer Vieira, I'm Josh Pato Guessman. You've been listening to our little Corner of the Galaxy. Have a great one, everybody. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. Fans, we thank you for listening. We ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye. Goodbye.